What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction to Q Season 2, Episode 11. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. You'll notice the new placement for the mic where it kind of goes across my face. And this was a suggestion from one of the comments in the last Haikyuu video. They recommended to have the mic go across to balance out some more of the sound because I think the sound was kind of varying too much. So we're going to give this a shot and let me know if this improves the sound quality for you. This was one of the funniest Haikyuu comments that I've read in all of my Haikyuu reaction videos so far. I should make a barbecue tutorial video because I'm actually pretty good at barbecuing meat and I do worship meat as well. I'm definitely going to add this to one of my favorite phrases of Haikyuu, just like how I love to say, nice to receive it. I'm going to start randomly saying, hey, hey, hey. I actually like Bokuto so far because even though he knows he's one of the best players in Japan, he's willing to help someone he just met improve their volleyball skills. He seems to treat everyone with the same respect, which is rare for such a talented player like himself. Although the one quality I do not like about him is how he is emotionally up and down on the court. Those type of players are really frustrating to play with because when they get down, it brings the whole team down and it's so difficult to help bring that one person up. But in general, I still like Bokuto so far and at least a lot more than Oikawa. I really love that the author of Haikyuu chose to use Takeda Sensei as the assistant coach and not some very experienced volleyball assistant coach. This makes it more realistic because for high school teams, in all honesty, you just have to take who you can get on the coaching staff. But also, the fact that Takeda Sensei doesn't have a lot of volleyball knowledge is actually an advantage in some ways. Because he provides a very raw and unbiased perspective, he's not restricted by traditional volleyball thinking, and he provides the emotional support and life mentorship that all young people need. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on my Patreon, where you receive exclusive access to monthly live Q&A sessions, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Also, you can support the brand by getting your own Elevate apparel like this Pride Bold tee with the link in the description box. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Now let's get this high Q party started. Ooh, starting off with that intense rock music, of course, with Bokuto, the emotional one. Akashi. Akashi. <laughs> so dramatic. Like Korean drama. I should be calling him K-pop. <laughs> Good thing he's got a teammate to keep him in check. Just tell him how it is. Episode 11 above. Let's see who is above in this episode. That was a good line turn. Nice kiss. Who has a nice set on back one? Wow, 22 22. Close with one of the top teams in Japan. They make a lot of interesting sounds. Hey! Oh, oh. A dump. Is that a requirement for every team to have a, a female team manager? <laughs> I guess the team is just used to Bokuto being up and down, so everyone's like, yeah, that's just him. And they just play on. Match point! 
クローダには僕とか引っ張るチームっつうより他のメンバー全員で僕とを引っ張るチームってことか、うん This is such an interesting statement where Coach Ukai says Fukuro Dani is not a team that Bokuto pulls, and he's not the main reason why the team is good. It's the other way around, where the other team is the one that keeps Bokuto in focus and on the team and playing well. That's how a good team should be run. It's not so much about the superstars as the reason why that team is good, it's really the other players around that star. That make the team good because it's a team sport. You cannot win on a single player. And when that star player has a bad day or is not playing well, the other teammates know they have to step it up and also keep Bokuto engaged and confident. So, this is a great example of how a good team should be run. Tochi! Oh, Tsuki with the block. Hmm. Wow, 23-24. It's getting close. And Kuro is looking over the other court watch. As everyone's watching this game here. Ooh. Oh no, don't play it safe. That's the worst thing you could do is play it safe on game point. Because now you're going to give them an easy chance to just... Pass great, set their hitter, and then side out. <laughs> oh, maybe Bokuto's gonna do his nice cut shot. ASAP! Oh, in the seam. That was a great hit. Even Bokuto is surprised. <laughs> I love where they do the slow motions where the audience gets to see truly what goes on in a setter's head. Now, even though this whole scene is about maybe one minute long with a lot of thinking and slow dialogue, this is exactly what goes on in a setter's head, except it happens in a split second. So, the higher level you play, the more information you can process in a short period of time. So, I know it might seem unrealistic, but they're just slowing it down so you can actually see what a setter thinks. And this is exactly what a setter has to consider. They're trying to decide who should I set in critical situations. And I don't remember the setter's name yet. He has purposely not set Bokuto because he's trying to give him a break and he knows that he's kind of emotionally down. But then he knows that now Bokuto is starting to get hungry for the ball. And it's time to finish the game, so this is a great decision to be able to set him, especially since he has been setting Bokuto in the last couple of points. So Karasuno will start focusing on the other players, and once they start focusing on the other players, that's when the setter will go back to Bokuto. And this is why there's a little bit of a hole in between the block, or what we call a seam, because Suki doesn't think they're going to set Bokuto because the setter hasn't set Bokuto in a while. So, Suki is not mentally ready to block Bokuto, so that's why he's late. So, there you see Tsuki a little bit late to the block. And Bokuto is just ready and hungry. And then that little seam in between the block, the little hole, because Tsuki was late to close the block. Let's see what Bokuto's reaction is to this kill. Hey, hey, hey! And it's over just like that. That was a good game, though. Oh, Bokuto's gonna explode. <laughs> Everyone has to cheer him up. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> oh, I like this guy. There we go. There's the hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, that's because he's got a good team to help pick him up. A simpleton? That's funny. That's what they called Hinata.
Mm, I love that analogy. Strong roots for a team like a tree. Yeah. Very perceptive of Takeda Sensei to know the difference between an ace and not an ace. You know what's funny? I just posted something about learning how to make an aggressive serve under pressure on a game point situation just like Asahi. I made a post about this on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, so make sure you check that out. But in summary, the tendency for most people is to shy away from those big moments. So when Asahi was about to serve, he's probably thinking, uh, I don't want to mess up and lose the game for my team. Right? A lot of people are don't want to serve tough because they're embarrassed to miss. They don't want to let their team down. You know, a lot of good reasons. But ultimately, that's not how you win games because you have to embrace those big moments. The way you embrace those big moments is by accepting the big risk that comes with the big reward. And one quote I just learned from... James Shaw, who's a former Stanford men's volleyball player, everything you want in life is on the other side of fear. Okay, so let me repeat that again. Everything that you want in life is on the other side of fear. So I'll use Asahi for example. He wants to be able to finish the game not just with this hitting, but also with the serving, right? He wants to be the ace. He wants to fully embrace that role. But what's getting in his way right now to fully becoming the ace, even as a server, is fear. So he has to be able to push through that fear, embrace it, that he might miss, but be okay with that because as long as the intent is there to try to finish the game, that's the only way he can push past that fear and eventually learn how to serve well under pressure. And I hate to say it, but... Oikawa is actually really great at serving under pressure. There are many scenes in Haikyuu where Seijo was down and Oikawa knew that I have to turn it up because I got to get my team back on track so he serves a couple tough aces. Or when the game is close, he knows that I have the ability to finish it so I need to finish it. And as many of you pointed out about Oikawa, he worked very very hard on his jump serve so even though now he's very consistent and can serve really tough under pressure, I'm pretty sure he's had to make a lot of mistakes and missed a lot of game point serves to get to where he is right now. So hopefully in a future episode, Asahi will get a chance to serve under pressure and have a chance to go for it and finish the game for his team. And instead of playing it safe, he's going to toss it super high and just crush the ball. And that's what we want out of our ace. Those are some good words from Coach Ukai. The fact that you're aware of that means that you have a chance to get better at it. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks messing up on the last point. You feel like it's all your fault. Yeah, even though they lost, Coach Ukai is doing such a great thing by recognizing all the improvements that they've worked so hard in this training camp. They've improved so much in however many days, three days? Combination! Mm -hmm. They're just getting started. Ooh, another Takeda Sensei life life lesson. Mm, so true. Especially as an art teacher, that's true. When you mix all those colors, you can't unmix them. I love his analogies. <laughs> I love it. Embracing their punishments with pride. Accepting the loss and, and taking responsibility for it. 
Ooh, more practice. If you guys watched my collab reaction with uh, Victoria Garrick, which I highly recommend, we were talking about how realistic Karasuno is because a lot of these moments and some stories and personalities are from real volleyball experiences that both Victoria and I have personally experienced. However, there is one aspect of, of Haikyuu that is not realistic where everyone on the team from starters to bench players are fully bought in and always trying to get better and getting reps. Even on my volleyball team, I'm considered someone who's a little too obsessed about volleyball because I'm always texting people, you want to go to this open gym, you want to get some reps, you want to get some more practice. And other people are saying, oh, I don't want to wake up at 6 a.m. And yes, I would love to wake up at 6 a.m. to just get some extra volleyball reps. <laughs> so in that respect, it's not realistic because very rarely are you going to be on a team where people are this hungry all the time to get better, even at the professional level. So just keep that in mind. Ooh, Tsuga's going to join them too, and he's not even a starter. Oh, Tsuga's going to hit some. Hell yeah. Mm. Kageyama, never satisfied. That's why I like him. Yeah, they have more tools to, to compete now. Ooh, now Hinata's the one that's Kageyama, encouraging Kageyama. <laughs> but he can't take it. He cannot. That's funny. And of course, Tsuki always with his comments. <laughs> Negative goatee. It's funny. Yes, I love it. Chop him in the stomach. <laughs> Why are they yelling at Hinata? He didn't do anything. Oh, this is the moment we've been waiting for, the barbecue. But your car sooner is going to eat the most. <laughs> Crying because she's cutting the onions, that's hilarious. Ooh, Tsuki is like reaching out. <laughs> Bokuto's drooling, I love it. Oh. I love it. Hinata just goes up to the best player and says, Let's go again. We're not going to lose. I love his belief. <laughs> he still has drool on his mouth. <laughs> I knew it. I knew these guys were going to battle it out for who can eat the most meat. <laughs> Everyone's drooling like rabid dogs. I love that coach with sunglasses. He's just chilling. <laughs> oh man, this is making me so hungry. Can't wait to eat after this. Oh yeah, he can't eat too fast, Kageyama. <laughs> this is so funny. Ooh, Onigiri. Oh, even the, the ladies are getting in on this. What is going on here? <laughs> oh. Which one are they? Do they want more of the meat or to talk to to the team manager? Yes. What the hell is going on here? Oh, that's... <laughs> we gotta watch that scene again where they're mesmerizing why they call him master. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. 
to try to learn the ways of getting touched by Kyoko-san. <laughs> oh man, this is just so good. <laughs> Wait, why is Tanaka in there? Oh man. Shimizu. Shimizu, okay, that's her name. I already forgot. I wonder if girls get offended by scenes like that. Let me know in the comments if, if you get offended. I'm curious. Hmm. Yeah, that's just a sign of a good relationship. <laughs> mm, pushy uncles. They do it because they like Kenma or they like him. Like a little boy trying to make him eat more to grow. Man, what's up with her? She's around all these big men, big boys. <laughs> oh, she's intimidated by them because she wants to eat some meat. Ooh. <laughs> what a gentleman. Sees that she's waiting in line patiently. <laughs> All these big, big guys gathering around her. I think they're just trying to help her. <laughs> so true. <clears throat> if I were a high school boy, I'd rather be in the other group of ladies. Ah, this is where the volleyball gossip happens. Ushiwaka. Who is Ushiwaka? Man, too many names. Oh, Ushiwaka is that, that really good lefty. Yeah. Ooh, we haven't even met these people yet. I wonder how they choose the rankings of who's number one, two, and three. <laughs> Why does he not want to be called Suki by him? Maybe only people who know Suki should call him Suki? Man, can't wait to see that team. Mm. <laughs> he talked big for a second. That was a, a great barbecue scene. Yeah, yeah, sometimes just going to a big event, immersing yourself in that volleyball atmosphere, you see incredible growth. That is true. The other grandpa coach from Nikoma, I actually don't remember his name. What he said really is the ultimate goal of any good coach. To teach your players 
to always strive to be their best all the time so that they don't regret whatever happened. Because at the end of the day, you really can't control whether you win or lose. You can train to try to win, of course, and you want to definitely do that to increase your chances of winning. But there's so many factors outside of your control. There's injuries, you can have some drama that happens on the team, the floor could be extra slippery, maybe you didn't sleep well last night, or you're just off that day, the ref makes a couple bad calls. So there's a lot of things that can affect the outcome no matter how hard you train. But the only thing you can control is the attitude, effort, and focus you put toward trying to win. And you want to play your hardest so that whether you win or lose, you don't have any regrets. And that's not just a great way to play volleyball, but also a great way to live your life. Hi. Ooh, we got some sad music going on because it's the end of the training camp. <laughs> Interesting that he views that being lower ranked as being weak. <laughs> Tora's crying. Man, what a great experience. I wish I could be part of that training group. Man, it's only at the halfway mark. So much has gone on. I feel like it's been 30 minutes already. Oh, they got their their quick set down, their quick attack down in the the halftime. Okay, this is the preliminaries that they keep talking about. So they qualified so they don't have to do some preliminary qualification, if I'm understanding this correctly. <laughs> That's right, they've only been doing practice matches and scrimmages this whole time, so for her to actually see them compete in uniform will be a new experience for her. Now this is the, the, the high Q stretch here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Yamaguchi work, waiting to work on his jump float. Come on, Yamaguchi, let's see what you got. See what your all your practice has been doing. Oh, but we got encouragement from another player. This is such an important quality to carry as a teammate is during practice a lot of people wait till games to give compliments but during practice even in the middle of a drill when a teammate does something well even if they didn't execute the ball well like let's say a defender went all out for a ball and dove for it but they didn't get the ball up you always want to say hey good effort or a great dive you'll get the next one and that feels so great even as an adult one reason why I love playing with Brant is when we practice together, if I pass well, he goes, hey, nice pass. Or if I get a kill, he's like, hey, great swing. You always want to have that type of culture carried out by your team members to always be a positive force and always affirming each other. And especially from such a great player like Nishinoya to give a compliment to Yamaguchi, that's going to build Yamaguchi's confidence because right now he's still learning and he's nervous and He's trying to figure out his role on the team, so he needs all the support and affirmation he can get. Yeah, Moipo. That's right, Yamaguchi. Mm. Who is that guy? Kakugawa. And he purposely hit his face because they're going to show him later. Man, I'm excited to meet all these new players. Oh, his older brother. Maybe he's been off in college. 
Maybe this is a chance for Atsuki to finally reconcile and ask him, like, why did you lie to me this whole time? <laughs> Come on. Have an honest conversation with them, Tsuki. Oh. But you don't know if he's telling the truth. Because he loves the sport. Mm. Man, what a good older brother is just being honest with him. Oh. Is he on a college team? Those are some great words from him. One thing that was great that Suki's older brother referenced is that one moment. Whenever we play volleyball, usually we start off because we want to have fun, we're socializing, we want to try a new sport. But then, as you continue to play, you might get bit by the bug. And that's what we call it in the United States, where you have that one moment, that one defining moment, where you're just passing for fun, and all of a sudden, you actually have this amazing dig, and it feels so good, and it's such a new experience, and also, it's a very addicting experience. And you want to experience that more. So you're like, whoa, this is what volleyball is about. So then you come back and you train harder and you try to get more of those moments. Or as a hitter, maybe you're just spiking just to keep the ball in play and just have fun. And that one moment where something happens to click and turn on and you crush it. And even if it's on accident, you're like, whoa, that felt amazing. I want to do that more. And Suki's brother took it one step further and said, I want to get that feeling again. I want to be a good player and I'm not going to stop until I'm satisfied with my volleyball performance. And I think that's a great pursuit that the journey of becoming a great volleyball player is actually more enjoyable than the destination. So it looks like that connected with Tsuki a little bit and Tsuki finally got the closure that he needed from that traumatic experience of seeing his brother on the, the sidelines. Oh, more reps. Yeah, this must be a local team in the mountains, Tohoku. Oh, and they're. Had, did they come to Grandpa Ukai on their own? Oh, Grandpa Ukai. He might get hooked now and want to help out with Karasuno. He's like, what is this? Oh, we get to go back to Date Tech. I actually really like that team. <laughs> the big man separates them. We get a little sneak peek with all the teams getting ready for the the next upcoming competition. Ooh, I love it. K-pop is working on his jump serve. Who is this guy? He's also got cool hair. Other teams. Everyone's got a different haircut. That's that's pretty. I wonder if that actually really happens in Japan, if it, all these players have different, so completely different hairstyles. Ooh. But we got Ushiwaki here. I can't wait to see him play if he's really on the youth national team as a high school person. Morikai. Damn, that guy's got a deep voice. Deeper than mine. Morikai. 
All right, so everyone's preparing for the high school spring tournament, and of course we got the the Japanese sunrise. Here's my immediate reaction to episode 11. Just when I thought the barbecue scenes couldn't get any better, that was some very creative storytelling, and the fact that Haikyuu was able to make boys eating barbecued meat such an entertaining sequence that probably lasted maybe five to six minutes which is a big chunk of the episode that that's that's pretty impressive you had the group of boys that were worshiping Nishinoya Tanaka because they somehow have this connection with Shimizu then you have Yachi-chan that's intimidated by, by all these big guys and is scared to to get the the barbecue meat that she was really craving then you have the group of team managers that are gossiping about the volleyball teams and then you have all these little side conversations between the individual players and all these little perspectives make you feel like you're actually there with the team eating that barbecued meat and that scene must have taken so long to write and to animate because even though it was only five minutes there's a lot of things going on during that barbecue party i liked how they talk about who was the best ranked players because I actually haven't seen any of them except for Bokuto in the top five. And we've met Ushiwaka, but we actually haven't gotten a chance to see him play. We just know he's this big guy, lefty opposite, who has a very deep voice and is very intimidating. I didn't know Oikawa was in that mix because I did see his face when they were talking about the top five players. But that scene definitely got me excited to meet more teams and other great players that we'll meet throughout the episodes. Seeing all the Karasuno players always talking about, hey, you want to get some more practice after practice? Can you set me? Can you serve at me? It makes me super envious because I wish I had a group like that that wants to train all the time. For me, I'm constantly going through my phone texting people, hey, you want to go to this open gym? You want to practice and get some reps here? But that's just life and it's hard to meet other people that are just as obsessed about volleyball as I am and it is a lonely existence. But I am grateful for Kai, Chris, and Brant that are willing to play with me at least once a week and also want to get better. I was surprised to actually see the scene where Tsuki was talking to his older brother, and I'm even more surprised that they actually had a serious conversation about that traumatic experience that happened when they were younger. I think it would be really awesome if Tsuki's brother actually ended up becoming a great volleyball player and then finally became the mentor that Tsuki really thought he was as a volleyball player. One thing I love about Hinata is you just randomly see him go up to some player, whether it's Lev or Bokuto, and say, you're not going to be better than me, or next time I'm going to beat you. It's not just like super cute as a little guy that's going up to him and say, yeah, I'm going to beat you next time. But it's such a great reflection of his character and how he never gives up. He always believes he can be better. And more importantly, he always believes he can beat any team. And that's such an important quality to have because belief is the first step to any great thing you want to do. Even if you're capable of doing something, if you don't believe you can do it, it doesn't matter. A perfect example of this is when I was playing for San Jose State for the men's club team, one of our players was also playing for the Division I basketball team at our school. So he joined our club team and he's actually had some volleyball experience. He was six foot eight, pretty explosive, and could hit the snot out of the ball. And he can obviously dunk a basketball pretty easily, so he jumped pretty well. During hitting lines, he would crush it, but during the game, he was afraid to hit it. He would tip it, he would roll shot it, and it wasn't because he was trying to be strategic. It was because he was intimidated or afraid to make a mistake. So there's a great example of someone who was very physically capable of crushing the ball and dominating at the net. But because he doesn't believe he can do it, he's not going to do it. So that's one thing we can learn from Hinata is the importance of belief. And that's something that you have control over. You dictate what you believe you can do. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. So once again, let me know if the sound was a little better for you guys in the comments. I always want to try to make better and better quality videos for you guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.